Hi everyone, my name is Justin Odisho and welcome back to another episode of Every Effect in Adobe Premiere Pro Explained. In this video of the series, we're gonna be taking a look at the Stylize Video Effects folder. As the name suggests, these are some of the most fun and stylistic effects that you can play with in Adobe Premiere Pro, and there's no shortage of them. We have a good, decent handful to go over. So to begin, let's start with Alpha Glow. So like we've been saying, whenever you talk about Alpha, it's talking about the actual shape of the layer. So if I was to drag in a text or shape layer that is smaller than the composition's boundaries and add an alpha glow to this, you'll see that it creates kind of like a glow around the edges. So if I increase that glow amount, it gets larger. I can increase the brightness of it as well. And I can change the color. So the start color right now is set to gray and gray, but if we change it to let's say bright red, you'll see that's the start of the glow and then the edge of the glow we can change it to something else too. So let's say blue. You'll see it slowly will get more blue around the edges. But you do have to check use end color to see that end color gradient take place. Next up we have brush strokes. This is an effect that makes your image look like it's painted out of brush strokes. In the effect controls panel, you can adjust the angle of the stroke, the size of the stroke, the length of it. One cool part about this is that the brush strokes are animated, so it can be a cool way to bring life to a still text or still logo if you're going for that more hand drawn, quirky kind of look. When you are working with a video, a couple solutions that I might have in mind if you don't want to see that edge and you want to fill out the entire frame is either just increasing the scale of the video a bit. Since you're already getting distortion from the brush strokes, you don't have to worry about quality loss kind of as much. Or if you want, you can duplicate the layer. I can do that just by holding option and dragging. And then on the layer underneath, just remove any effects. So it kind of fills in back with the original video, blending in those brush strokes a bit. Next up, we have emboss and color emboss. So emboss takes the edges of an image, but it retains the color. So if I was to increase the relief a lot, you'll see what's going on. It's kind of splitting the these channels and by result if you just do a couple pixels it can give this sharp embossed look kind of like it's impressed out of stone or something you can change the direction of the way that that light or channel separation is happening and you can also increase or decrease the contrast so you can really cook the image or just give a subtle emboss maybe if you're looking for a sharpening effect you can also blend with the original if you want to decrease or increase the strength. Emboss has a similar idea, but in this case, it doesn't really retain any information about the colors. You just kind of get the edge outline that happens. So you might not use this on its own, but you might use it to get information about the contrast of an image and perhaps blend it on a blending mode elsewhere. So if I was to take this same embossed image on, on track two, and then set it to a blending mode of like overlay or soft light, you'll see all it does is add a slight bit of contrast almost. Since we're working with blending modes, this is almost like a perfect gray anywhere where there isn't the edges. And so we're kind of just multiplying the edge colors against the original image, giving a sharpening look. Next up, we have find edges. This one's pretty self-explanatory. It tries to find the edges of the image and isolates them. And if you can invert it, you'll get the black background with the light colored edges, or if you leave it normal, you get the light background with the dark colored edges. You can leave it as is for this kind of pencil drawn look, or you can blend it and colorize it in various different ways to get a stylistic, artistic type of effect. So let's say I was to use this find edges effect, put it at like 40% blending mode, and use something like tint, like we've seen in an earlier color effects video. In this way, we've created some strange colorful outline of the original video. So there's many different ways you, you can combine all these stylistic effects. Next up, we have mosaic. And this is one that you're probably common with. It's like a pixelation type of effect. So you can increase the amount of blocks horizontally or vertically for a sharper or more blocky image. One common way that you might use this is to blur out sensitive information in this stylistic way. So you don't have to blur the whole video even. You can also use a mask to blur out just someone's face or a sign or object or license plate, something like that. And you can keyframe the position of the mask. 
Another effect we have is posterize. This separates the, the colors and levels of an image into segments or levels. So this is seven levels of posterization. If I turn on the Lumetri scopes, you'll see what's happening. It chunks in every single piece of information into these seven levels rather than having the full range of colors. So you get a kind of cutout effect. If I was to lower the levels, it goes all the way down to two. You can see what happens at each level, three, four, five, and so on. If you increase it a crazy amount, you basically just get a lower quality version of the original image. As you can see what's happening. So here's the same posterization effect with a color tint applied. It's kind of cool because the water is adding its natural distortion in camera. Next up, we have the replicate effect. This one's pretty self-explanatory. It kind of tiles the, the video. This is two replications or a two by two. Here's a three by three, four by four, so on. So you can replicate into tiles. Working on a shape layer again for this next one, if I use the roughen edges tool, it does what it says. It kind of roughens those edges. So you have all types of options on the type of edge roughening that you do, spiky or rusty, different ways. And you can increase how far that digs into the clip. So this can be a cool way to add a rough edge to a shape or text object. And once you do apply some roughening, you can actually add keyframes to the evolution of it to add some animation to those rough edges. So you can give some texture and movement to still objects or still texts. Next up, we have Solarize. You can see what happens in the Lumetri scopes a little bit. When I turn the effect on and off, it effectively inverts the bottom half of the colors, inverting only the shadows. A more plain and clear example here, we have some really sharp contrast between white and black. So if I solarize, you see only the black gets flipped and all of this cloudy area stays pretty much normal. So solarize can be a cool effect for stylization and you can affect the threshold actually. By default, it's at 50, but you can see we can lower the threshold for solarization or increase it a lot. Next up, we have strobe light. This is one that I've covered pretty extensively in full separate videos if you wanna check them out on my channel. But this basically creates a strobe light in whatever color or strobe cuts of to black or transparency on your clip. So by default, it's just a white strobe flashing every half second, every one second. So you get this strobe effect happening. But if I lower that to like 0.2 and 0.4, it'll flash for 0.2 seconds every 0.4 seconds. And you can change the color of the strobe to be whatever you want. You can make the strobe operate as a color or just make the layer transparent. So here's a transparent strobe. And you'll see that if I move this to a video track above and move another clip underneath, you'll see the two clips will begin to strobe because really actually whatever's underneath this will strobe because this is just a transparent strobing clip. Next up, we have texturize. This allows us to take the texture of one layer and apply it onto another. So if I add it onto this flat time-lapse sky and I drag, let's say, another layer on top. And just so we can see what's going on, I'm going to make this layer invisible. But on the construction time-lapse clip here, I'm going to use the video track 3, which is what that layer is on, as the texture layer. And I can increase the direction or contrast of that. And now you can see it's using the shape of those bubbles and, and bokeh lights as the texture for this layer. So you can mix different video clips together in this way or actually use like a texture of a straw woven pattern or something like that to texturize another clip. Lastly, we have threshold, which is similar to posterize, but in this case, just black and white. So it kind of splits the levels into black and white at a certain threshold. This might not be useful just at, on its own. You might not want to get this crazy contrasted black and white look. But like I've been showing you in some of the previous videos in this playlist and series, like the keying and matte effects, this can be useful to turn a layer into a matte or kind of a mask to use for blending two other layers or some other things together. So just as a quick example, if I take this layer and I threshold it, and then I take this layer and I put it on multiply, for example. Now we've filled in the thresholded animation of those time-lapse clouds with another video clip going on. 
So you can just imagine some different ways this, this can be used. You know, if I was to put it on screen, it'd be the opposite. So that's the last one in the stylized video effects folder. If you enjoyed this video, stick around for the next video. We're going to be taking a look at the time video effects folder, which is a small but powerful and unique video effects folder. If you're enjoying this playlist, definitely subscribe to my channel to stay tuned for any new videos I make. And you can find all of the rest of the videos I've done so far in the playlist for this on my channel. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video where we go over the time, echo, and posterize effects.